Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're going to be solving a Physics 7B Fluid Transport Practice Problem. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like, it really helps a lot. So the problem goes as follows. So a series of pumps and pipes carries water uphill from a reservoir to a high altitude neighborhood. Each circle below is a pump. Each pump is gonna add 250 kilojoules of energy density. Points 1, 2, and 3 are all just after a pump. The three points are at the same pressure for parts A and B. So we have to solve these uh, three questions. Uh, please make sure to pause the video in order to copy the instructions on your notebook. I'm just going to go ahead and read the first one and start there. If the altitude change from 1 to 2 is 17 meters, what is the thermal energy density loss from point 1 to point 2? Okay, so as you can see, I have everything written down here in my notes. Um, so the points 1, 2, and 3 are right after each pump. So this is point 1, this is 2, and then this is 3. And for the parts A and B, all of these pressures are exactly the same. Uh, part 1 is saying that the altitude difference from point 1 to point 2 is equal to 17 meters and they are asking me what is the thermal energy density loss so you know what is IR basically so let's just go ahead and uh, figure this out well obviously we have to use a Renoli equation because that is the only place in which we are gonna find out this term so let's just go ahead and do that so the entire Bernoulli equation, let me just write it out. Okay, so let's see which terms cancel out. Delta P is actually gonna cancel out because for parts A and B on this final exam problem, the three pressures are exactly the same. So this is gonna go away. This term is not going to cancel out because we do have a change in height going from 1 to 2 is equal to 17 meters. Um, this term is going to go away because the area stays the same. Um, so this goes away. And if I go from 1 to 2, and this is why the instructions are important, I'm only crossing one of the uh, pumps. So. Um, this is equal to E pump divided by volume, negative IR. So I'm just going to go ahead and solve for IR. So IR is just going to be energy of the pump divided by volume. Um, so this goes positive, this goes negative. So negative rho G delta Y. I'm only crossing one of the pumps. So I'm only um, taking in 250 kilojoules. So two five zero 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 in terms of SI units, and then minus this is water, so a thousand, then and um, seventeen over here. So let's just go ahead and put this on a calculator. Let's see. Um, two five dun, 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 minus one thousand. Then 17, and this is equal to uh, 80,000 joules meters cube. There we go. So I guess that the only important thing over here is to remember that this is kilojoules. So uh, you need to put it in joules because this is all on SI units. This is going to give you joules, so you can't uh, really subtract kilojoules minus joules, that's not gonna work. So uh, very important to just make sure that you have everything on the right units and that's what's gonna give us our final answer for part A. So let's just go ahead and read part B. So part B says, the pipe has a circular cross section with a radius of 50 centimeters. Okay, 50 centimeters over here. If the total flow rate is 1.3 meters cubed per second, then what is the speed of the water in the pipe? Okay, so this one's kind of uh, straightforward-ish because we do have I, uh, and it's already on SI units. And we know that by definition, or 
or the definition that we use is area times velocity. Um, so we already have this number and what we want is this velocity. We don't have the area, but we do have a radius. So we can basically work with the radius in order to get um, the area and then we would just have to solve for the velocity. So let's just go ahead and do that. So the area of the pipe is equal, uh, so the area of the circle is just uh, r squared by r squared. Uh, the only thing that's going to be an issue is that uh, this is an SI unit, uh, the r is not an SI unit, so we just need to change this 50 centimeters to meters, so this is actually half a meter, so 0 0.5 meters. So now that we have that, this is just pi times 0 0.5 meters squared. So this is gonna be, um, you know, pi times 0 0.5 squared, 0 0.785, you know, meters squared. So now going back to velocity, velo uh, velocity is just flow rate divided by area. So I just have to divide um, 1.3, 0.78 by 0.785. So let's just go ahead and do that. So 1.3 divided by answer, 1.65 meters per second. So final answer is 1.65 meters per second. There we go. So now let's just go ahead and solve part C of this final exam problem. The pipe section between the second and third pumps needs to be replaced, but due to a contractor mistake, the new pipe section is wider than before. How does the pressure compare between points one and two? Okay, so let's just see. Um, so the pipe section between the second and third pumps needs to be replaced, but due to a contractor mistake, the new pipe section is wider than before. Okay, so basically, let's see. So instead of doing this, then basically you start here and then you kinda go like this, right? So it needs to be wider. So how is this pressure gonna compare uh, between points one and two? So uh, before delta P used to be zero and also our kinetic energy term used to be zero because we didn't have any change in the area. So I canceled them both. Uh, but now, oh, okay, so this is already wider. This is my bad. This is what I wanted to check out. Like this. So point two is already at a wider area like this. Um, so before delta P used to be zero, this term used to be zero. But now when we go from uh, point one to point two, we are actually gonna experience a change in kinetic energy. So let's just copy our Bernoulli equation. So the new Bernoulli equation would basically be delta P um, plus rho G delta Y plus one half rho del V squared. And this would have to be equal to uh, heat pump volume minus IR, like this. So let's say this term over here is already equal to these terms over here. How do I know? Well, uh, I didn't change the pump at all. So this is still, you know, 250 kilojoules. This number didn't change. The current also didn't change uh, because I didn't really change this area or this velocity at all. So I'm still, you know, I'm still gonna have the same flow rate. I'm still gonna have this term. It's gonna be exactly the same. So this is still gonna be equal to this too. 
So the only way that delta P can change is if I go from a small area to a bigger area, that means that I'm going from fast to slow, which decreases this term over here. And in order for this equation to still hold true, which basically, you know, this cancels these two. So in order for these two to uh, quote unquote balance out, then um, this needs to actually increase. So before we didn't really have a change in pressure, but if you, if you apply this change and you change the area, delta P has to increase. So delta P has to increase. And if this is an increase, which means that this is a positive, that means that uh, because it's final minus initial, that means that pressure at two is higher than pressure at one, even though they weren't really asking uh, which one is higher or where they. Oh yeah, they were asking how do they compare. Well, pressure at two now has to be greater than pressure at one uh, because nothing else really changed except this term. And if this term is gonna be going down, this has to go up as a direct consequence of that. Um, so anyways, uh, this finishes this problem. So I hope that this was useful. If you thought it was useful, please leave a like. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to leave a comment and I'll read them out and I'll see you guys on the next video.